Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar, MDS Chorus Building Services uh, for Small uh, Works. Today's webinar lasts maybe 45 minutes, roughly. Uh, everyone attending's microphones are muted, but we want as much feedback as possible. Please put questions in, observations in the chat, and we'll follow all of them uh, up following uh, the webinar. So uh, my name is uh, Stephen Hamill, I'm Innovation Director at MBS, mainly on the product side, but also spend a lot of time speaking with uh, customers and doing uh, doing some of the events and uh, articles for, for the MBS website. I'm joined today by my colleague, Jason Dobson, who's Technical Content Authoring Manager on the Building Service Engineering side. And what we'll do today, we'll start uh, with Jason, who will talk a little bit uh, about the Building Service Engineering content, in particular, the new small works. Uh, offer and you'll show some sample specifications that have been created using this template content and guidance. Then in the middle of the webinar will be myself just uh, showing uh, how you can use the MBS Chorus software to, to take that content and prepare specifications, publish them, work with things like uh, Office Guidance, Office Masters, and then we'll finish off just uh, Going through some of the questions that the sort of thing we get asked typically by customers about how our technical authors work and how they research and author the content. So jumping straight in, uh, I'm going to pass over to Jason now, who's going to talk about building services specification content for uh, small works. Over to you, Jason. Okay. Um, services small works um, for for larger projects. And and, and 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 big projects we, we we've really got a lot of the content covered we've, we've we've got everything covered for large commercial projects such as schools and hospitals and big offices it's already covered in uni class and what we looked at we looked at a range of smaller projects that perhaps the larger offering of uni class was was perhaps overkill for and so we started to consider what we could offer as part of a services small works package. And, um, you know, the types of uh, subscriber that we are considering when we're offering services small works are perhaps small to medium sized practices, uh, perhaps smaller contractors who maybe don't undertake large hospital projects, as I say, um, and, 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 and jobs like that. We also know that price is a potential an issue uh, for, for some of these uh, smaller to medium companies. So again, we, we've looked at this services small works package in order to meet the need of, of those types of subscriber. In terms of, of, of what we're offering then in, in, in the services small works, well, we actually offer quite a lot. Um, you know, we, we've, we've got all of the HVAC stuff that you'd expect to see so we have heating systems, vent systems. We certainly have uh, moving on to sort of domestic hot water um, in terms of cold water systems. We've obviously got all the electrical side of things, small power, uh, lighting protection systems, and you know lighting, etc. We, we we offer quite a lot, and 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 obviously we we, we thought about this with small works because when when you look at what small works may be. Or what what some people consider it to be, in in terms of building services, you have to have, still have a quite a wide range of, uh, of 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 systems in order to to specify this type of work. So so there's plenty in there still. Um, what 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 we what we actually do in in terms of exclusions is we've excluded sort of big ticket items that you wouldn't expect on 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 smaller jobs. Um, so. You know, things like HV installations, um, uh, gas and liquid detection explodes for, for explosive atmospheres, um, you know, commercial, you know, large commercial uh, HVAC controls, um, medical and lab type projects. So you can see those types of projects, you know, we've excluded those from the package. They may well turn up in, in, in large projects, um, but for small works, we didn't think they would be required. Um, and so... If if those are the types of uh, things that you would require, then then perhaps the full package would would, would be the better option for for yourselves. I, th 
I think um, it's worth speaking about what types of projects that we deemed of able to be covered with services small works. And so the types of projects that we, we, we've got in mind are things like small office builds, um, you know, refer, refurbishments for, for offices, extensions, certainly. Um, similarly, you know, for education type projects, you know, school extensions and minor refurbishments. Um, into retail, uh, things like small retail unit um, builds, again, refurbishments and, and fit out type projects. And of course, things like domestic and residential new builds, extensions and refurbs. So that should give you a flavour of, of, of the types of uh, project that we'd hope to cover under services small works. OK, so let's, let's take a look at um, one of some of the outputs um, from from MBS Chorus um, and the types of uh, specification and those clauses that we'd see in, in, in a small works package. So what I've got on my screen right now is um, uh, a sample project that we've got uh, for, for the Lakeside restaurant. It's a theoretical project, so it's not actually a real building, um, but um, it's uh, a restaurant uh, project, as you might imagine, next to the lake. It's got all the features that you'd expect for a restaurant to have. And, you know, for, for, for um, building services, that, that, that's fairly extensive. But we'd hope to cover it in, um, in, in services small works. So, so what I've got for you today is I've got um, a couple of um, sample systems that we've used for the Lakeside Restaurant specification. So what we have on the screen we have our first system, which is a sprinkler system. OK, um, you know, maybe maybe some people may be surprised we've included this um, in, in, in uh, our sample um, in our services, small works. But it's, it's actually quite uh, it's quite a key area. And again, for small works, you know, you might have a project where you need to do an extension to a sprinkler system, you know, modifications to a sprinkler system. So we, we didn't feel we could leave it out. In, in this specification, this is a brand new sprinkler system because it's a new build restaurant. So what you can see is some of the outputs, the output of what you would see in your published specification. So, OK, it's, it's very basic. In a, in a larger spec, you would have all kinds of systems in your in your content section. Here we just have the sprinklers. So if we slide down from the content and start at the beginning, what you can see here is a system outline. Okay. Now system outline is exactly that. You can you can it tells you exactly what the system's all about. It tells you some key key things about this part of the specification because it talks about design responsibility. Uh, and in this one, this is a, a descriptive uh, clause or a des descriptive system. And that really means that there's going to be a lot of design development expected and, and, and an onus put on the contractor, you know, very much like a CDP type situation, uh, which, which would be typical for sprinklers, as I'm sure most people will, will agree and understand. However, we do have still quite a lot of detail in the in the sprinkler system. So. You'll see here as, as we scroll down, we've got the system outline and, and I like to think of the system outline as a shopping list. Um, it tells you everything about that system, at a very high level and starts to bring in things like system performance, where where we do this, that will link into further clauses as we scroll down. There's things like system manufacturer. And again, because this is kind of a CDP um, type clause, then it's very much open ended. It's submit proposals and things like that. But there are details to be to be adhered to. Um, so, for example, things like the storage tank, the various pumps that are involved and the distribution pipe work, etc. OK, key areas like fire stopping um, and, and things like if we required insulation, perhaps on external uh, connection pipe works for sprinklers, that's all covered as well, okay? So you, you, you'll find a whole range of products in this shopping list, as I like to think of it, uh, in a system outline. Moving down the way, we come to things like system accessories, 
and plant and equipment identification, labeling and, and, and such. And then we come to some important areas as, as, as we're building up our spec. And so we've got our execution clauses, which are how do we install? What are our expectations for the contractor, you know, in terms of how they're going to install this system? You know, it's 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 going to be CDP, but we've still got an expectation as as a consultant engineer or as a client that, 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 that this is what we want to happen on this particular installation. And then finally, we come to system completion, which is which is, a, a, you know, kind of an extension of the execution, but it's where what we expect to see in, in terms of testing, commissioning, final handover, documentation and, 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 and maintenance indeed. OK, so, so that's our system outline. And, and, and as I said, that's that's kind of the skeleton and, and the shopping list. As we move down, we come to things like system performance. OK, and, and, and this is telling our, our people that are going to take on this uh, package of works uh, what we're expecting them to do, what, what standards we'd like them to adhere to, what hazard class, particularly for sprinklers, very important, and, 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 and the, the, the basic overarching expectations for them to take forward the design. So we have a range of performance clauses, design, things like our water supplies, the extent of the areas to be protected under the project. And all the time we're, we're, we're maybe referencing drawings or certain areas of the, um, of, of perhaps schedules as, as other design information, okay? Again, uh, things like pipework sizing, how to, you know, the tanks, etc. All nice based performance clauses. And then we come to things like our product clauses, which is again, brought in from our shopping list, from our system outline. But you'll see these are our products that we're looking for, okay? And again, we can, you know, we, we're selecting right down to the nitty gritty here. It, it's right down to the nuts and bolts of, 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 of our expectation for, for this particular system. So here we've got things like bean clamps. We've certainly got pipe clips. We've got labeling, which is very important. Uh, valves, charts and schematics, ID labels. So, you know, Nothing's missed. There's a real attention to detail. If, of course, uh, as part of your uh, small works offering and your specification, these items are not required, you know, it may be overkill in some, 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 some areas, you're able to exclude them from the spec and park those. Um, so, you know, you don't have to take on all of this stuff. These, these are offered uh, to subscribers, um, but they can be parked and, and, and don't therefore don't appear. Moving uh, forward to the, the, the real nitty gritty in terms of products, we've got obviously key key plant and, uh, and materials such as uh, large the large sprinkler tank uh, that we've required on this system. Um, certainly things like immersion heaters for the tank, gauging for the tank, steel pipelines, steel fittings. You, you know, you can go on ad infinitum here and you can see there's a whole range of, of key uh key key products that we're bringing in as, as part of our specification Stephen, my colleague will, will will explain this in chorus and show how this is built up uh to give you this end product and one of the key things they'll show you is when we're looking at products in particular we have a library of uh of manufacturers uh that, that appear on on our software that can be brought in um and and, and directly so if there is a specific pump uh, that's that's on our platform it can literally be dragged and dropped into your specification if if that fits the the criteria that you're specifying um so that's a really nice feature um so if we move away finally away from the products here what we can do is we can come to our execution clauses and this is this is as i said before the doing you know the the installation of the project of of, of the of the project um and what we expect what, what what we're setting out in our spec what we want our contractor to actually do and again we're telling people exactly what we're expecting at each stage so how we want the pipeline supports to be how we want the the plant to be identified what we expect how how we want them right down to the nitty gritty of how how we expecting them to fit valve charts and schematics? It might be it might be fairly uh, it might be fairly basic, but we're we're enabling the specifier 
to really spell this out for the contractor so that there's no ambiguity at all. So again, a whole range of important uh, execution clauses here. Um, and finally, we can slide down through execution and you'll see a whole range of, of key execution there. And we'll finally slide down to things like completion clauses, um, which if you think about, you know, commissioning or, you know, preparation for commissioning pre-com type stuff, um, you know, testing pump alarm devices, looking at integration with other systems, um, you know, all, all of these key areas that we that, that, that we have to have as part of our testing, completion, handover and documentation. So you can see there flushing, testing a system, inspection and test records, really important for, for, for sprinklers. Um, and again, uh, key documentation and also maintenance. You know, what, what we expect, what, what are we going to set out in our, in our specification for the contractor in terms of maintenance? OK, so, so that's that's sprinklers. Cut there, please, Andy. OK, so that, that was a brief look at sprinklers. Um, one other area, again, very much uh, M&E based. One other area that I'd really uh, keen to show you today um, is on um, a, a, a domestic hot water system. Uh, it's an indirect hot water storage supply system. Again, very, very similar. You know, this is the this is what you get in terms of your spec. There, there are a, an array of options. Obviously, you can badge the spec up, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll see again contents looking sparse here because we're only looking at one system in this instance but we'll come to our system outline so here we see we here we have uh indirect hot water storage supply systems our system outline again so this is our shopping list again some some nice introductory notes here to you know telling telling uh the 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 recipient that they must read this spec in conjunction with the drawings and 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 and, and looking at the prelims okay again looking at what is the design responsibility for this system well this system is a little bit different to the sprinklers this 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 is to give you a little bit of contrast so this is a prescriptive design uh and we've, we've labeled it up as a p you'll see that in, in 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 p in brackets there and so this is a complete instructive design telling the uh the the contractor exactly what they have to do on the project we're setting out exactly what they're going to provide as a part of this specification and what, what they're going to do to deliver this job and so again a nice system outline it's telling you the details of, of things like the capacity of the uh, hot water storage calorifier it's talking about the heat source and it's actually in, in this case we're referring to another area within the spec and, and, and giving you this nice reference to where to look and find it. So it'll be gas-fired condensing boilers via a sealed system. And things like immersion heaters, uh, pumps. So we've got the primary pump. Um, and we've also got, you know, your, 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 your domestic hot water return pump all specified here. And again, just as a sprinkler system, these are going to be your product clauses that are going to come in as we go down the specification okay but they're linked and they're brought in directly from this system outline okay so all all the stuff that you'd expect to see as part of a domestic hot water system um so things like your expansion devices pressure gauges temp gauges you know right down to accessories you know things like sleeving as we go through walls and and, and, and stuff like that so again into very fine detail um to allow you to spec right down to the nut and bolt if, if, if required to do so. Um, various sections on valves, you know, the variety of valves that you need. Obviously, insulation is really key on, on a pipe system like this. So again, it enables you to specify this. And then a little, little note on controls. So, so even though the controls are brought in here as part of this system outline, they actually appear in a, in a neater fashion elsewhere in the spec and what we've done again is we've referenced and provided the the end user or the or the recipient recipient of the spec the ability to go away and look at the controls relevant to the domestic hot water system so again that's what's referred to here 
and we've done the same in terms of sanitary appliances because we know that probably that's going to be architect spec probably on an N13 schedule. So again, we've referenced it and pointed, signposted um, our recipient of the spec to, to that area. It's linked to this spec, but we've we've put it somewhere else to, to keep it clean, okay? Um, so you'll see here, typically again, at the very bottom of the system outline, we have a range of execution clauses. These are our installation clauses again, if we remember, and our expectation of how the job should be installed. And, and what standards should be adhered to in, in that installation. And then additionally, or finally, we've got uh, our completion clauses. And again, setting out very clearly what our expectations of how the job should be completed, testing, commissioning, inspection and test records, you know, right down to client training, all the documentation, right through to maintenance, okay? So, here we have some, some performance clauses again. So this is this is how we want the design to work. You know, various standards that we want people to, to adhere to, the types of temperature ranges that we're expecting um, with, with our design. And, and yes, we're confirming that, yes, it will be through a cold water booster that, 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 that the system gets uh, the hot water distributed on. So we've certainly got things like pipeline sizing and we've told people how to calculate those things. Again, this is a fairly prescriptive um, design. So we'd expect this to be on drawings, but you know, we're looking at water velocities and, and that sort of good stuff, stuff that you can, you can do in your own, in your own calcs and, but it will be done for you in this instance because a consultant will have done it. Typical draw off requirements. So, you know, again, it's, it's a good starting place for any design. We're looking for, you know, uh, how much a dishwasher is expecting to draw off, basins, sinks, all the, all the, 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 the outlets that we'd expect in, in this restaurant uh, and, and basically how much water they're going to draw off in, in litres a second. So moving forward down sh straight out from our shopping list, from our, from our system outline, we've got things like pipe clips in our products. You'll notice here that this, this has been pulled in from MBS Chorus because there's there's a particular pipe type of pipe clip that I'm looking for on this project. And I've literally, what I've done is I've dragged and dropped this into my spec with all the relative relevant contact details for, to, to aid us with procurement. And um, it's, it's, it's really clear in the spec what I'm looking for the contractor to do in, in, in terms of that particular product. We'll see that in some other products as well. This is just one example. Um, so yeah, moving through lots and lots of products, we've got things like valve labeling again, uh, we've got charts and schematics, um, we've certainly got important stuff, expansion vessels, and again, we, we, we're really laying this out in this particular system, you know, we're telling exactly what the expansion vessel should be, you know, yeah, certainly RAS approved, things like working pressure, working pressure, pre-charge pressure, you know, things like operating temperature, right down to the very materials that is to be constructed of. So we've been really prescriptive in this in this particular instance. Um, we've certainly got our calorifier. And, and again, you know, we're being prescriptive here. You know, we, we're setting out the standards. We're telling everyone the capacity of it uh, and, and the working pressures, et cetera. And then, you know, right down to the, the, the nitty gritty, you know, these strap pumps we'd expect to see, things like access chambers, anti-vac valves, you know, th th this is all common stuff that we'd expect, but we're, we're, we're laying this out ready for the contractor to pick this up immediately and go away and start procuring this in, in this prescriptive uh, spec in this system. So, yeah, moving through, it's, it's, it's more of the same. There's lots and lots of typical products that we'd expect to see on a domestic hot water system, um, right through to your pumps, uh, you know, your, 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 your circulating pumps. Um, you know, valves, etc. So here's here's another example of where we've pulled in a particular valve from from the MBS chorus platform. Um, and you can see there they're just isolate valves. In this case, they're ball valves. And we've pulled in this particular model. And again, we've been really prescriptive. We've said where we, you know, the exact model that we're looking for, and with all the contact details to, to go and aid that contractor with the procurement of that particular product. And so move, moving through the remainder of the products, which there are quite a few in this system, you can, you can, as you can imagine, we come to things like insulation, which again would be a different package, but again, it's, it's relevant to this particular system and, and it must be recorded here. 
Um, and so again, we're setting out the details of, of the insulation, the relevant standards, and what we're expecting that insulation to be. Okay, so as you can see, there's a whole range of products. We then come to the execution, which again, look, it's more of the same. We've got how to install it. So how to install our pipeline brackets, you know, how to identify, you know, a very, key, a very uh, exact expectation on how we want the plant and the equipment to be identified. Um, valve charts, valve ID labels, um, things like uh, expansion, you know, thermal linear expansion, uh, allowances for that, what we want, how we expect them to be fitted, uh, installing pressure gauges, pipe and fittings. Uh, it's copper pipe work on this particular spec. Um, and there's a range of different jointing methods that we've, we've allowed for in this particular uh, system. Um, you, you know, guides on distances, clipping distances, different distances from other services and, and, and various other features of the building. So I'm hoping that you're getting the picture um, that, you know, this is a really prescriptive version of the spec. It's, it's really laying out everything that the contractor ought to, ought to know in order to, for them to install this project. So moving through very finally, we'll come to the system completion. And again, you know, it's, it's, very, it's, it's different types of stuff. But we're looking at the very the, the very similar stuff for the for the for the for the, for the sprinklers as, as a sprinklers. So it's commissioning, it's it's inspection and testing, it's it's client demos, it's documentation. Um, you know, there, there'll be certainly water treatment, water quality tests that we'd expect, right down to the nitty gritty of, you know, where we want the sample points to be, how many uh, copies of the report that we're looking for. For, for all the analyses. So we're really setting our stall out with this particular system and saying, telling the contractor exactly what we want. Finally, we've got things like spares that we're asking for, things like tools to assist the end user with, perhaps an FM contractor. Uh, and finally, maintenance, you know, a very, very quick reference to maintenance, but it, it may be in this case that the contractor needs to undertake some maintenance during the first 12 months, perhaps during their defects liability period. Okay, so that's a, a hopefully a, a whistle stop look at uh, an, another example of a prescriptive uh, system uh, generated by MBS Chorus. Okay. Yeah, thank thank you very much, Jason. That was a really really interesting to do a sort of deep dive into the the content. The, the second part of the presentation now is to actually look at the software, and I'm going to do a, a demonstration of MBS Chorus. Uh, our specification platform shown the functionality that uh, Jason and team used to uh, prepare that specification and publish it. So we just have 10 minutes uh, off myself now. So yeah, if you, if you search for MBS on Google, MBS Chorus, you, you land on our website and all the information about what I'm going to present today can be uh, uh, found on this, this page here. MBS Chorus, watch the video, find out more. We also have our sort of plans and features, scope of content up here as well. So everything I show, you can see afterwards on the web. But what uh, I'm going to do is uh, just jump straight into the course itself, which if you're a subscriber, you can do here. And once you've used Chorus for a number of projects, you will get a dashboard with the projects that, that you are currently working on, that you've historically worked on. And if you work for it, so larger organization, you can click all projects and see the projects across uh, across your practice and across the different uh, offices. What I'm going to do is jump into this uh, project here, uh, a pretend project I've set up in Newtown uh, High School. And I'm going to jump uh, straight in and uh, add a new specification. So I'm just going to call it uh, building services specification. And I'm going to use the the, the Uniclass UK content set. It also comes with preliminaries as well. Uh, not not going to talk about preliminaries today, but uh, you can create a set of contract pre preliminaries uh, for a project as well. But I'm going to use the UK Uniclass uh, work section uh, library. Now, when you come in here, it, it there's two ways of adding content from the MBS library. One is to browse to what you want to, uh, to add. And the other is to, to do, do, a, do, do a search. 
So what I'm going to do is maybe add a heating system and a, a sprinkler system. And to add the heating system, I'm going to, to browse and see what's, what, what's there. So I'm coming down uh, to heating, cooling, refrigeration, uh, down here under uh, the, the SS60. So jumping across the structural engineering and architecture content. And I'll expand that out. And uh, I want to have a heating system to heat a, a building space. So I'm coming in here. And uh, you see, we've got a little node there with all of the various heating systems alongside things like cooling and heat pumps and underfloor heating, uh, et cetera. So when I click on any of these, so if I look, say, at an electric heating system, on the right hand side, before you actually sort of add it into the job, you get uh, guidance from NBS, either at the level of heating systems. So you've got nice pages and pages of design guidance that's been researched and authored uh, by Jason and the team. Sources like BSI, SIBSI, uh, BRE, uh, BISRIA, uh, et cetera. And then when you come into a specific system, low temperature, hot water heating system, you get a bit of a preview and sort of application guidance at the top there. You'll notice that this one here has a little yellow uh, flag as well. This is where you can put your organization guidance in. So you can say like, NBS say this, but as a practice, here's a link to our intranet with our lessons learned. So you can use Chorus as a knowledge capture tool alongside the NBS guidance. But to specify a low temperature hot water heating system, you just click the, the plus button and that template will uh, drop into the, into the job. If I want to specify a sprinkler system, I could browse down here and find it uh, probably under the, 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 the safety or protection systems or just search for the word uh, sprinkler. And got quite a nice search engine. You search the title and all of the guidance notes and sprinkler systems comes off at the top there and click the plus in. I'm demonstrating the live version of Chorus here. So we're, we're just seeing one services engineering library, but that's our sort of full for complex buildings. If I jump across to our test server here, you'll see if I search on our test server, we've introduced the, the services small works. And uh, you can see which systems are in the, just the services library. So things like climatic beams, like big complex projects, but the sprinkler system there is also in the, the services small works. Just while I'm in here, I'll, I'll search for ventilation. And again, uh, sort of larger sort of smoke and heat exhaust systems, pressure differential systems are just in that large, maybe a big garage of an office, local exhaust ventilation. But all of these ventilation systems here are in the, the services small works content. And you can subscribe to Services Small Works for a number of years, and then you win a really big project. You can pay that little bit extra and get the, the, the full content at, at any stage. So let, let's jump back. And I've added two systems to the job. Uh, the Lakeside Restaurant's got a good set of uh, 35, 40 systems. But when I open these up, this is the starting point that uh, Jason completed that full project spec from. And there's that system outline clause with a a big checklist of all of the things that you may or may not want to specify. So you just have a little look down there and it's, it's like having somebody in Jason's team sat next to you saying, okay, you want to specify their sprinkler system. Let's go through these items and see which clauses you want to add to your project. And a small job, you might want to keep that nice and small and cross lots of things off. If, uh, for example, there's no trace heating, you just click the, the P button and get rid of things, make it smaller, and equally you can add your own items to it as well. Insert your own items, add tables. Uh, and as I'm going through this, if you've got any of your own organization notes, you can toggle between the NBS guidance with the links to the standards and your own uh, organization notes here. And you write, write the stuff that's private to your organization and will help your, your, your colleagues. Uh, early on in the job, you might want to give it a little reference code. So this could be part of the firefighter systems 101. And we also have the ability to, to do a, a summary of the most important clauses. You can export that to Excel. You could have a, a list of all of the different systems with a, all of their descriptions. 
We'll do that with that little checkbox. So what's in here, I'm just going to copy in some uh, text that's sort of pre, uh, pre-written here rather than spend a long time copying and uh, writing lots of text. But let's uh, bang that text in. Like end of stage two, and you want to sort of share your intention with the rest of the project team, uh, maybe the client, share your intention with the, the architect, structural engineer, quantity surveyor. And that might all be all you do at that stage of the project. You, you leave that for, for, for later on in the project. You do the same here with the low temperature hot water heating system. Yeah, uh, hot water systems, somebody shared to you, all. give it a little reference code because you might have more than one uh, in that particular package. And again, just copy and paste uh, some text in there. Now, because I made those as summary schedule items, if I jump back here to the table of contents, uh, I can click summary here and you, you see uh, as the systems are building up, you've got a little description, you can export that out. Uh, equally, you can come in and not a nice format and options as well. You want to put a hyperlink in or bullet points or what have you, table. As you put those in, it just sort of formats the, the, the text as well. And then uh, later on in the project, when you come to sort of, uh, you see this specialist uh, contract design portion here, as you, you come into these clause items, you can invoke the, the clauses. So we looked earlier at the system performance subsection, they get uh, invoked uh, from here. And as I make those decisions, the specification grows. So there's all of the different clauses that uh, Jason completed. And as you come into, to complete any of these, you get guidance uh, on the right hand side and suggested values to help you just create that specification at uh, that little bit quicker. What I'm not going to show today, but you, you can do is you can create masters as well. So if you always specify the same type of spring to the system on a office project, you can partially complete this, push it into your masters and then reuse that, maintain it against uh, NBS as standards change and uh, keep that uh, up to date. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the different products that make up a sprinkler system, but at the bottom here, you see the execution clauses and the system completion clauses as well. So let's just bang in a few of, uh, few of those as well. And you'll see very quickly the, the specification grows. I'd imagine you spend a bit more time than I do, do making those decisions, but you, you see I'm creating a sort of best in class specification specific to this project, not just reusing old Microsoft Word spec with the help of the MBS guidance, and drop down values, links to standards, uh, et cetera. If we jump across to the heating system here, uh, I'll demonstrate some of the product uh, clauses here. Uh, you may not have a burner. So what you'll notice here is when I cross out burner, the child clause items go as well. So I cross out burner, arrangement and type have been hidden away. You can get those back. So they just crossed out, you can pull them back if you, you change your mind. And you can also see who uh, made those decisions as well. So if I come in here, you can hover over the top and see two minutes ago, Stephen Hamill uh, made uh, that decision. Uh, but let's make some uh, positive decisions and add some items in. So for the heat source, we will go for a, a gas fired condensing boiler. For the pumps, we'll go for a canned rotor pump. You can have a little preview of it before you add it in. If you've already got a canned rotor pump in the job, you can reference two systems to one child's uh, product. But let's just keep this nice and simple. Heating system with the boiler, pumps, and for the output, the heat emitters, let's go for a combination of air curtains, radiant panels, uh, and radiators. And what, what else should we put in? Uh, put in as well. Oh, let's just leave it. Leave it like that. Nice. But you can see we've got files and fire stopping and uh, et cetera. Lots of different, different things there. Every time you get one of these blue chips, it's a, a hyperlink to further down the spec, either in the chorus software or in the PDF uh, that you get later. And then I can specify this generically. 
and say, okay, the manufacturer is going to be like submit the proposals to me. And then you could go through and specify all of your different sort of minimum spec uh, requirements. So I want to stay in the steel uh, with three phase voltage, what have you. Or you can pick from the manufacturer product library. So if I come uh, here, gas fired boiler, when I click in manufacturer, you'll see we've got a growing number of manufacturers that are positioning their product against the generic NBS spec. And they provide guidance and technical content, and contact support as well. So I could have a look at the, the Green Star Bosch uh, boiler, read the application guidance, and see this is maybe just for homes with one bathroom. That's not appropriate. Look at the 8,000 boiler. This is multiple bathrooms. Yeah, this is the one I want. And what the uh, Worcester Bosch here have done is aligned all of their content to the MBS structure. So what are the options in terms of output, uh, energy efficiency, seasonal efficiency, et cetera. And you just click that plus button and that uh, drops into the job. So I don't want to spend too long today demonstrating course. We have a full webinar on the, uh, if anybody would like to see that, drop it in the chat, we can uh, send it through. But uh, that's essentially how you prepare a specification and edit it to make it uh, project specific. Uh, one thing I do want to quickly demonstrate is when a clause is complete, uh, you can tick it off and say it's, uh, it's, it's now ready for the project. So I'll do a really simple clause here with one, one value here. Don't have the MCSC drawings as well. Once I've completed that clause, I can just uh, click that box and it says you've now completed one out of the 11 uh, clauses. So you can just go through uh, uh, ticking all of those off. And when it's ready to print, you can print it all and you've got action publish, or you can uh, say, I just want to print the sprinkler system, which is uh, what Jason demonstrated. And you get a nice little wizard that takes you through. You can full track in the revisions. How is this compared to the previous revision? I sent it out so you can compare with the previous published document. And then you can put all of the, the, the different publication codes on the cover page. You might have saw that when the, the, the PDF was demonstrated. So things like what's the name and convention of the document? Is it for stage approval? Is it authorized? Is it just there for coming for review, et cetera? And then finally, you can uh, add a little style sheet on as well. But let, let's look at one we've done earlier rather than me just print out a, a blank spec. This is the Lakeside Restaurant Project uh, that Jason worked on. And it, we're extending what we previously done last year on the architectural side. One thing I didn't touch on is the collaborative working side. So you can have one seat of MBS chorus and have three or four of your team members coming in and out. But this is where you specify who can access the specification and what their permission is. So you can have external consultants coming in and using your license and you can track license usage. So how many people are using the license in your organization? Like all five of our Licenses are taken uh, right now. Maybe I can come and kick this uh, this person off who's been hasn't been active for five hours. But yeah, let's have a look at how sort of some of these printouts look. So if I come uh, building services spec here, the two publications that uh, Jason demonstrated have been recorded here. So authorized end stage four contractual ones, and there's a record of the PDF that uh, was published. And I imagine that would then get uploaded into the common data environment alongside things like the drawings uh, as part of the, the, the tender pack or as part of revised specifications through the construction stage. And you've got that professional looking specification with your company logo on and things. I think the last thing I'd like to show inside the course itself is the, the spec notes. Oh, there's so much I can show, but we can run out of time. There's a sort of big summary of all the specs. Uh, you can see all of the ticks that the technical team have done as they've been completing those specification clauses. But just looking at the spec notes, on the right hand side, you may have noticed there was the MBS guidance, the manufacturer content, the organization guidance. But what you can also see here are the notes that have been made at a project level. So we've got the, one of Jason's colleagues, Chris, here that's 
wasn't quite sure whether to specify PN6 or PN10 for the indirect uh, hot water heating system here. And uh, Chris and Jason have just worked together. So you've got NBS guidance, you've got product information. You can add your organization-wide notes across all projects, like your master information, and then capture those spec notes uh, as well. So uh, I think that completes the demo for now. If, if you're interested in seeing more, drop a message in and we'll, we can do a one-to-one -one, uh, demonstration, answer your questions with our customer support team. I do want to show how the specification integrates with drawings and schedules. So I'm just going to jump across to Autodesk Revit now. So in Autodesk Revit, uh, now what you can see is that all MBS Chorus subscribers get access to the plugin, which sits inside of Revit for when you're doing uh, your design, your schedules, your drawing sheets, uh, et cetera. And by logging on, I see all of the same uh, projects. So there's the Lakeside Restaurant. Was it a school? I think I was demonstrating earlier. There's the school project. And if I uh, just refresh this, I can see the building services specification I, I set up seven or eight minutes ago. So the first thing I do is link the Revit model to the specification. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is how by linking the model and the objects together, it makes it really easy to do things like scheduling, annotations of drawings, and keep that coordinated. So wherever you see these three dots, you can get a little menu that pops up. And what I'm going to do is associate the Revit model with uh, the MBS Chorus specification in the cloud. Let's get that reassurance. Yes, and that links the, the two together. And then here's the, the specification I created uh, earlier and all the items. So there's the, the boiler from Bosch. I think I added the pump as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, it's as simple as you click on the object in Revit. So there's the boiler. There's the boiler on the right hand side. It's a big list of 100 products. You might want to use the search filter function, but I just click the three dots again and click associate with model. And that's created a, a link between that type of boiler and the specification clause, which covers the, the type as well. And let's just do the same on the, on the pump. And the first thing that does is it's added GUIDs as well as the sort of visible classification codes. So when I click on that boiler next time, you see the boiler uh, in the specification. So as you're doing your design, you've got that technical information, you've got all of the MBS technical guidance, and uh, you've got the information from the manufacturer at your fingertips when you're doing the, the design work. And similarly, if I jump across and click on the, the can rotor pump, uh, it comes across and I can uh, actually come and like, write the spec from inside of Revit. So you've got sort of moving specification from this like hidden art that happens in the corner of the office to, to like write into the design uh, workflow there. And let's put some little properties inside the Revit type object. So uh, if I jump down here, you've got a few sort of hidden GUIDs that keep everything in sync. And then you've got the visible uh, codes uh, here as well. So when I come to do something like scheduling or annotation, then let's just quickly drop a drop an annotation. I know this isn't probably the best view here, but there's a an annotation for the boilers with the classification code. And the closed title. Uh, just keeps coming off there uh, from the, the, the Revit model. And you can have a nice sort of, however you want to style up your annotations, you more than one line, a box around them, what have you. And that information there is synchronized with the spec. Click on the boiler, comes up and you've got the same details on the right-hand side as the left-hand side. If you change things, so let's come and make a mistake, it alerts you that it's no longer perfectly in sync with, so let's call that boil 301, and we'll just call it, uh, I'm not sure if anybody calls it a GFC boiler, but for the purpose of this demonstration, we will. If that's been removed from the spec, you get an error. If it's had its information changed, you get uh, a little issue, a little warning. 
I'm saying, look, I've got a problem here. It's called GFC Boiler, Boiler 301 in the spec. In all of your drawings and schedules, it's uh, not got a suffix and called something else. You just click this fix button. If you watch the left-hand side, that uh, just brings everything uh, into sync. And you can confidently issue your spec, issue your drawings, your schedules, knowing that it's a full coordinated set of information. We're going to update this Revit model here with some really nice annotations and schedules to go with the sample specifications. So uh, we'll, we'll get those uh, done in the next three or four weeks and there'll be free downloads to anyone interested in Chorus uh, as well. So yeah, hi, we've got Jason back again now and uh, just the final section, just a few, few questions to you from uh, myself, Jason. Just in terms of your background, did you work on both sort of scales of projects when you were in practice? Yeah, uh, you, you know, I, I come from a, a largely contracting background, Stephen. So, you know, 25 years experience. And yeah, you work on all types of size of job and different types of projects. So, you know, if it's, you know, aerospace, education, uh, healthcare, uh, industrial um, type type facility. So, you know, it, it really varies. And, you know, you, know, you, you used to find yourself, you know, you, you could find yourself on like a 10 million quid m and &E job one year and then the next minute you're on a little 500k job you know and um or a little school extension as we mentioned before or something so it's a real mixed bag out there you know and and and, and it's the same in, in in design and in practice you know you, you you take the work where you can find it and um you, you know you you need to be able to uh in, in terms of designing you need to be able to design everything you know and um you know it's one of the areas it's one of the things we thought of when we looked at the services small works and that's why that's why I said with said earlier that you, you know to, to do small works you still need a fair array of content in order to achieve that you know that sometimes running a small job or delivering a small job it, it, it's almost as complex as running a big job you know they, they kind of just scale up um so so you need the ability to design and, and specify that uh, accordingly but but yeah in answer to your question all kinds of jobs Stephen yeah yeah and I know from and we've got a small package for architects as well. And speaking to some of the smaller architects, they, they've almost got to take on more responsibilities. They're, they're not just doing the design, but they're doing the spec, the contract administration, the project management, they're dealing with costs. And just because it's a smaller job or a smaller practice doesn't mean it's an easier, easier task, I guess. No. In terms well, that's, of the that's the thing, Stephen. Um, you know, if, if you look at um, the services, small works, you may well have practices that are out there doing the same for M&E. And, 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 and I think that's some of the thinking behind this offering, that it's going to enable those types of practices to, to, to really sort of get their efficiencies, to, to help them generate specs more quickly, to enable them to focus on the other things that are part of their day job. Yeah, and when you were demonstrating the content earlier, it's, like, it's incredible how many, much, how many words are in MDS, and then you look at the guidance as well. How big is the team that looks after the building services content? Well, at the moment, there's four of us, but it is expanding. Um, I think uh, we're split evenly. We're, we're two mechanical and two electrical. But as I say, that in the very, very near future uh, is, is expanding to, to probably at least another two. Um, at the moment, probably between us, we have 100 years experience. Um, so, so we have a mixture of old heads and, and, and actually some, some younger guys um, that are bringing in some, some very recent experience from, from consultancy and, uh, and, and the real world as well. So, so, so yeah, that's, that's about the size of the team. I think across the whole of the MBS technical team, and that includes architectural and civil engineers and, 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 and the like, I think we tied up there's a thousand years worth of, it, of experience be between the whole technical team. So yeah, we, we, we've, we've, we've got some really bright people in at MBS. That's great. And uh, I know in terms of the customer support, we get a lot of questions about how do you use the software? How do you click this button? And our, our software support team deal with that. But a number of queries come directly through the technical team as well. Yeah, they do. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we, we get regular contact with with big, big subscribers and some, some small as well. And um, what, what you find, Stephen, is that um, you've got some real big players out there on M&E Consultancy that, um, you know, they're really invested in MBS Chorus. And, 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 and you can tell that because the questions are very much how do I do this or what would be the better way to do that? So, you know, for, for example, um, I had a query there from, uh, from a very large consultancy asking me about uh, BMS uh, metering 
and, and how to best bring that into the specification. So again, look, we're on hand. We, we, we target uh, a response within at least 24 hours, uh, you know, and, and that's a full response, a full answer. Quite, quite often uh, with, with the uh, M&E ones, Stephen, it does culminate in, in, in a personal call uh, to that particular subscriber. So, so we answer it initially and um, we try to get feedback as, as quickly, you know, and, and 24 hours is pushing it, to be honest. Often it's much, much quicker. But y y we're quite often open to follow-up calls. Uh, and so we meet with people on a, perhaps a, a Microsoft Teams chat and we really look into the content and look at what's best for that, for that particular subscriber. And from a from the content side of things, if if a, I don't know, an engineer rings and says, "Oh, it's all right. We got we got Microsoft Word spec that we use. Or I've got an old version of NES from six or seven years ago." What would you say to them? To what would you say to them in terms of what the advantages of using a chorus and MBS is? Well, well, firstly, it's speed. I've touched upon that. You know, I mean, look, look, we've been doing the lakeside spec, and 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 look, there's a lot of work that goes into it, as you've pointed out, Stephen. There's a lot of words in there. And, and, and if you if you ask me to do that from scratch in in Microsoft Word uh, or, or something similar, I, I think it would be torturous. Now it, it really would. And um, so so you know I would encourage people just on a speed point of view. But you know if you look at the amount of information that's in Chorus, if you look at the guidance that's in there, if you look at the links to uh, you know to, to the Sys library that we've got there, you know all the various standards. Um, if you're looking at uh, Sibsi documentation, which are obviously a partner of us, um, Bizria documentation, I mean, the, 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 you know, it's all the most current stuff. And actually, that that's one of our main tasks in the team in, in ensuring that our guidance is the most current as it possibly can be. And, and, and I think people out there that perhaps aren't using tools like this, I think they're possibly at a slight disadvantage because they could well be looking at very old standards or very, you know, you know, what did we do on the last job? You know, so, oh yeah, you know, we'll do the same. And, and I can, I can tell people from firsthand experience that our reference documents are regularly going out of date and, and we have to be on them real quick to, to, to bring them up to currency. So I, I think speed, as I say, to, to recap, the speed of producing a spec, but also I think there's real risk, you know, for anyone out there, who's not using the most up-to-date guidance and, and, and reference documents, I think there's risk of, uh, of, of, of their specifications maybe not being as, as good as they ought to be, as watertight as they could be. And of course, no one wants to be in that situation where, where, where they're risking, you know, issues down the line. You know, everyone wants their projects to go as smoothly as possible. You know? I, I could talk for, for ages about this sort of stuff, but one last, one last question. Again, looking at the architecture side, we quite often demonstrate architects. We talk, it's not just about the quality of the product or annotating products on drawings. It's about the execution. It's about the handover information. Like, how do you like, install that timber floor? Or where are the instructions on how to clean the carpet? That's got to be almost a more important thing for building services in terms of what goes around the products in the system. 100%. I mean, look, you're right. I think I think it's important across the board. Um, so not to do our architectural friends down. Uh, it's across. It's important across the board. If you look at what uh, what we've got off the back of Grenfell Building Safety Act, you know, there were lots and lots of questions that Dame Judith Hackett came up with in terms of, um, you know, the competency levels, you know, verification of that competency and, 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 and how that how that installation was delivered, you know, and what checks were in place. You know, actually during the work, I know a lot of a lot of contractors, they've got their own QA procedures and, and, and that's captured. But as designers, we should be capturing that in our specifications where we should be telling, you know, people out there, perhaps if we're dealing with contractors that maybe aren't as well developed in their QA procedures as some, we should set it out in our specifications and, and we should stipulate exactly what we're expecting in terms of the installation, but but also how to complete that job. How do we want them to test it? Who's going to witness it? You know, um, you know, when are they going to do it? What documentation do we expect? And who checks that documentation when we verify at the end? Those types of things, they're really important for the golden thread. Everyone's talking about golden thread at the minute. For, for me, it, it's absolutely essential for, for us to capture that in our specifications, to maintain that golden thread. And therefore, by specification, enable others to deliver the job properly. And, and actually, to, 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 a, to a really important point, if it's in the specification, 
it shouldn't be a surprise to a contractor when they are tendering for a job. If, if, if it's in there, I've told you that's how I want you to do it. And these are all the activities I want you to do. Then the job can be priced correctly. And there's no surprises. We don't get ourselves into a position in a project where we could be arguing and, 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 and even going to crazy things like adjudication and, you know, real, real issues, problem areas that we ought not to get into in the modern day construction. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think it's really important to capture all those things in a spec. And that's what we're striving to do at MBS. Well, as I say, I could ask more questions, but I think we're going to have to cut that one, uh, yeah. cut that one there to a close. But uh, thanks very much for your time today, Jason. Thank you very much. Cheers, Stephen. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much the end of the webinar now. I said it would be 45 minutes, and I think we've taken the best part of an hour, but hopefully that's been good, good content, and it's been interesting. Just a reminder that we are the official specification and product data partner of SIBSI. Uh, and if you want to know more about, if you're a SIBSI member, a, a SIBSI practice, we, we do have uh, CPD sessions and exclusive subscription uh, offers as well. But yeah, please just uh, to finish off, please pop message in the chat. Please stay on for two minutes at the end and give us feedback. We want to produce really nice webinars. So tell us how we can do better. Tell us what you liked. Uh, visit the mbs.com to find out more about MBS Chorus. Uh, the sample specifications that Jason demonstrated, if you'd like copies of them, pop that request in the, the chat. And any questions, anything you want to sort of browse around, the mbs.com info at the mbs.com is the email address. Thanks very much, everyone, and uh, catch you at the next webinar. Bye bye.